All right, everyone. Um, we'll get started. Um, so good morning. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Craig Thompson, um, and welcome to this morning's Infobyte session, the Fortinet Value Proposition, uh, presented by our pre-sales lead and resident 40 guru, if you don't already know him, Jaden Zolo. Uh, navigating the customer conversation when tackling t uh, cybersecurity can often be a tricky one. I think we can all agree that that's a moving target when we're talking about new threats that are uncovered all the time. So we hope this session gives you some guidance on how to navigate, how to engage customers effectively and how to position Fortinet against the competition. As always with these sessions, we love questions. I know Jaden loves questions as well. So we ask you that throughout the session, should you have any, there's a question box uh, in your toolbar that you'll be able to um, enter your questions with. And then if you need to contact me directly for whatever reason, there's a chat box as well. We're also recording today's session, so we'll share that with a link um, afterwards in an email going out tomorrow uh, with some uh, links to some further feedback forms. We'd love your feedback as well. Um, uh, and those, those will be sent tomorrow. So with that being said, I'll hand over to Jaden now. Enjoy the session, everyone, and I'll come back to you with the Q&A. Thanks. Thanks, Craig. Uh, so everyone, we've got here um, the, I guess, second continuation of what we did in last quarter for our Infobyte series, which is around positioning uh, 40 net. So this one I've called level two, which is comparing security strategies. So those who attended the previous session will remember that we've got the uh, Australian Signals Directorate or the uh, Cybersecurity Council and their essential eight. You've probably heard it a thousand times, but it really is important to know these because what these are built around is about making sure a small business has the protection they need against cybersecurity. So jump onto ABC News, uh, have a look at the current articles that are out at the moment around cybersecurity, around the threats that's currently happening, especially during the pandemic. You've got the MyGov website, um, there are people who are having their identity stolen and then having their tax returns stolen. You've got people getting early access to Stupa, so having their super ripped out from their accounts because people are doing identity fraud. And then obviously, big elephant in the room, which is that some uh, international uh, governments are commissioning potentially their own cyber, cyber teams and they're going out trying to find a cure to COVID. So having these essential eight is what the Australian government recommends is the bare minimum to protect your business. So Fortinet, as you know, for these uh, eight here, do cover everything here, except for around backups. Obviously backups is more around your data integrity for your file, but you can still do backups of your security configs, which is very important in case you do get attacked. So when we look at a uh, sort of small to medium sized business, their current infrastructure is generally that they have a lot of vendors because they had in the past looked at best of breed. So the best of breed was all well and good uh, in the past, but a lot of those vendors now have potentially been bought up by some of the biggest security vendors. The other thing that may have occurred as well is that they've probably fallen behind in their R&D research. So Fortinet is in the top three global security vendors with Palo Alto and with Cisco. And then that way, if you uh, look at a single vendor strategy inside with Fortinet, then you're going with the best. Can get too many alerts when you've got uh, sort of disassociated infrastructure. So having too many alerts means it becomes a boy or, or girl who cries wolf and you may not necessarily look to see if it's actually something serious you should follow up. With Fortinet and a single vendor strategy, you get a single pane of glass, which allows you to actually look across all the different systems raising the alerts and then has the ability to speed up your response with machine AI and also policy syncing as well. So any slow or expensive manual response to those too many alerts across too many vendors is then automated through that machine AI and single pane of glass. And finally, you can reduce your training and overhead costs. So whether you've had to reduce your staff uh, because of COVID or maybe because you just wanted to sort of save some, some costs for your business, you can have less people in your team and then their training is faster because the ease of use of 40 OS and the ability of having your wireless, your switching, your firewall, as well as your endpoint, all from a single vendor who has a really great learning portal, which is training.fortinet.com, means that you can have a sort of some, some cost savings there with the single vendor uh, strategy. So let's have a look at what it looks like implemented in an office. So this is your standard office. And if we want to it's sort of deploy the essential eight within this office, what will we need? So the first thing we'll need is obviously a firewall router. Then we need a 4G modem, whether that's because you can't get MDM to site or it's still running on ADSL, or maybe you can't afford to run fiber, but most importantly, it's for a, a backup. So normally a 4G backup. Then you need a wireless access point for mobile devices that don't have an ethernet port. 
and then you need a, a PoE switch uh, or potentially just a switch there for your wired devices, normally around that legacy side as well. Perhaps you've got an old printer that only runs on the wired connection. Then you need some endpoint protection for your actual computers, your server, as well as your mobiles. You'll need multi-factor authentication as per the essential eight for your password hardening. Then you'll need some email protection because a lot of the actual uh, breaches that come through is from phishing links. So you'll need some form of email protection. The one that comes with Office 365 is good, but if you've got an older domain, it's, it's really not the best. So then you've got some surveillance cameras, that's for work health and safety, but also to protect the physical security of your assets, especially those things in your data rack as well. And then you've got cloud management. So this allows you to get your alerts when you're not necessarily in the office or connected to the VPN. And then finally, it always helps to have Australian support. So whether that's for hardware replacement so that you can get your, your parts shipped uh, and replaced within a reasonable amount of time so that you're not down with your different bits of products, but also if you've got local people who speak your local language. So if you do have an issue, then you can get some support in your language as well. So if we could then compare some of the top security vendors and how they actually rank in terms of a percentage score, to see what they offer from a single pane of glass management plus the type of security they have for that SMB suite. So if we look here, obviously everyone talks about Cisco Meraki. They are the number one on most of the lists. And as you can see, they're actually got the full completeness there. So Palo Alto, Checkpoint, Aruba, Sophos, Sonicwall. People always talk about sort of uh, those different vendors. They come up against them in the channel. So if you actually look at it here, really only Cisco Meraki offer that 100% suite along with 40 net. So all the other vendors, when you actually break down from that SMB suite, they're really only sort of scraping around that 60% mark in terms of what they can offer. And again, if we look furthermore into what are the awards that they're actually getting? So what are the certifications? What is the third party evaluation of how good their products are? Well, on the ICSA labs, they've got five certifications awarded to Fortinet with the closest being Sonic Ball with two. For the NSS labs, you've got nine from Fortinet, and Palo Alto only receiving four as the closest. Uh, next competitor, Cisco, as you can see there, even though they've got 100% of the stack, is only got two independent assessments from NSS and none from the ICSA. And then this is an interesting one from AB Comparative. So this is to do with email security and endpoint security. So of the tests they ran in 2020, 767 malware samples were pushed through and then ESET was able to uh, stop 99.6% missing three. And then you can see there Cisco actually missed 10 of the AB samples that were put through, whereas 49 actually blocked 100%. So that's another thing to as well look at in terms of uh, the awards, which is the protection testing. So, Again, the form factors that exist. So a lot of people sort of uh, will say, yeah, I'll just take a VM license, I'll get a VM license. But a lot of the small businesses and medium-sized businesses want the flexibility of not necessarily having hardware or they don't have a server that's VM capable. So what they're looking at instead is something what can Fortinet host it for us or we're running everything out of Azure or AWS. Are we able to plug something in from the marketplace? When it comes to Fortinet, the answer is yes. So we can have your huge Australian footprint here with your data center rollouts, with your hardware, with your shipping, offices in different states. And then there's some faces and names of the people that are here within Australia, 130 people nationwide. And all of these offerings, all of this breakdown, all this Australian support is then summarized in this particular SMB offering. So you've got the 40 gate, 40 extender, 40 AP, 40 switch, 40 client, 40 token, 40 mail, 40 cam, 40 cloud, 40 care. So all 10 of those allow you to cover the essential eight as recommended. And then if you do need to go up and you need to increase sort of that specialization, you can add more with 40 NAC, 40 Sandbox, and obviously 40 Client and 40 Token do upgrade to 40 Authenticated and 40 EDR. And your 40 Cloud, if it's not sufficient, can sort of break them down into the individual 40 Manager and 40 Analyzer. And then if you really want to go into that sort of upper level echelon of the enterprise space and you have a specialized security requirement, you can get things like 40 Deceptor, 40 DDoS, uh, 40 SOAR, uh, as well as 40 CASB if you have a really heavy dependence on uh, sort of cloud services such as Salesforce or, or Dropbox or Office 365. And again, there are those form factors down there, the appliance software virtual machine hosted in cloud. And what we've also got as well is this particular strategy. So on the slide, you saw that you've got the option of you know, different vendors in your mix. So what about Cisco being 100% across uh, all your different offerings? You've got what we call Fabric Ready. So Fabric connectors that are actually built into the 40 OS, which allow you to integrate uh, in different ways the security that is offered by the other vendors 
into that 40 net single pane of glass. So you don't necessarily have to go to your clients and say, look, we need to rip and replace everything with 40 net. And especially if you've got something like Cisco, you don't actually necessarily need to rip all the Cisco out and replace it all with 40 net equipment. There's actually some unison between them. Uh, and what you have there is what I call the 100 hub. So you can have your VPN and your UTM security policies actually push through and sync between the devices. So for that, I'm actually gonna show you what that looks like in the 40 OS. Um, here we go. So this is a 40 gate 60 E DSL. I'm just gonna log in. I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like in the 40 OS, but just exactly how much the Cisco application centric infrastructure and the 40 gates do intertwine. It's not hard. You don't need to have a high level of programming knowledge. You can just come in here to your 40 gate for this to load streaming video recording as well as giving voice at the same time. It can be a little bit hard on a uh, processor chip. That's an i5, but no matter. So we'll go here into this particular section called fabric. And of the different fabric section here, we go to what we call fabric connectors. And then we'll have a little button up here, which will say create new. Come on i5, come on thermal cooling. Here we go. So we go create new up here in the top left. Here it is, the application centric infrastructure by Cisco. We literally tick that particular icon, name the connector, put in the IP address of the Cisco ACI connector with a username and password, and we press OK. That's it. Now all of a sudden, then we've got some more information here on the right hand side. This will now connect the two together. If we want to set up your VPN network with your different branches and your different branches perhaps have some legacy Cisco infrastructure, we've got some templates that are already here integrated with Cisco, or you can just use the wizard. So here on the IPsec wizard within the actual 40 gate, it allows you to choose what your remote device type is with Cisco natively integrated in. So here's site to site, we can do Cisco and for remote access, we can then say it's a Cisco client that's installed on it from there as well. So it's really easy, it's visual, it's there, it's not a, you know, a whole bunch of hoops and that you have to jump through to be able to integrate Cisco with uh, Fortinet. So if you do go to your clients and they happen to say to you, yeah, you know what, we've already got Cisco here, you could say, that's fine. You know, if you look at some of these uh, independent assessments of the Cisco equipment, it doesn't have as much as Fortinet, all right, say it in a nice way, and then just go, don't, don't worry, it is natively integrated into, the, into your FortiGate here as well. So if we go back to um, sort of some of the key terms um, that you can sort of uh, phrase and, and, and say to your clients, you can say terms like, uh, do you have visibility you require to make informed decisions? So this is around single pane of glass. Do you feel like you have control over your network? I mean, do you have policy sync across all the different parts? You remember, we looked at sort of the 10 different types of SMB product suites that you can have in an office. You know, what are your corporate policy and how do you enforce them? You know, what, do you assess the effectiveness of your solution? What's your reporting look like for your current solution? Does everything roll up or do you need to do or a CSV sort of export and run everything through a third party reporting platform? You know, how long has it been since your last refresh cycle? Maybe the building has MBN or maybe it has fiber. Is the current devices that it's got have enough throughput to actually cater for the bandwidth? You know, from that capacity and planning standpoint, just because you, you have the equipment now, it's maybe only two years old, how long are you looking to actually get out of that equipment? What's that the return on investment on there? Can it keep up with the speed of your business value moving more things to cloud? You know, are there challenges in getting your security budget allocated? Well, what you can do with the 40 net equipment is use that to show ROI. And when you brief your executive staff, do they have all the metrics they're looking for? 40 net equipment allows you to do endpoint analysis, as well as your cloud analysis, as well as your infrastructure analysis. So all those metrics can normally answer the executive staff about where all the budget is going. So you can actually show and justify the ROI. So uh, we've also got the CTAP. So if someone just simply says to you, I don't know, then roll out CTAP. So with uh, Wavelink, we can basically send out a 60E or a 300E to site, and then we can get you some metrics back from the existing infrastructure about what's actually there on site. And that intelligence is really going to help you be able to position the right 40 net single pane of glass, a single vendor strategy for that particular partner. You've also got the ability to demo and do purchase uh, NFR equipment, which comes with enterprise licensing at around about 50% off RRP for you to use and demo in your own environment, or use in your own environment, so that perhaps you want some of that single pane of glass efficiency in your own reseller business. 
Then you've also got the partner portal, which has some really good battle cards. So a lot of the information you've seen here about the competitor is summed up in the asset library in the partner portal. But if you're, you're busy and, and you sort of need some more sort of leg up or a hand, we can always white label our services with our pre-sales and marketing. So we've got a dedicated marketing team and pre-sales team, which you could use on your opportunities or with your marketing to really help get the message out there about single pane of glass and, and how it integrates uh, with the fabric ready partnerships as well. So what I'll do now is hand back to Craig to open up questions that are there in the chat box, anything you want to ask. And then now we've also got some, some questions that people wrote in before, some of the, the partners we showed this presentation to earlier. So Craig, over to you. Awesome, thank you, Jaden. Uh, that was that's always a great it's always a great presentation from you. That's what I love about having you on these sessions. Um, just a little bit more information on the CTAPs as well. Jaden did go into a little bit of detail on the CTAPs. We also run dedicated workshops for resellers on um, CTAP. So if anyone on this call wants more information on how to integrate a CTAP program into your offering, please let us know. You can either get in touch with Jaden or myself, or email marketing at wavelink.com.au. Um, and then also what we'll do we also as well. do uh, the, the selling um, workshop as well. So yes. we also do a one hour uh, seminar, which is the previous one we did of this combined with this as well. So if your sales reps want to have some more in-depth training around, we can also do a 45 minute seminar around that as well. Yes, exactly. So yeah, we can definitely um, take these sessions and run them independently for, um, for you and your team as well. Um, so while we, are, while we are going through the questions, if anyone does have any more, please feel free to um, put them in the questions box or in the chat box as well. So the first question, Jaden, that we had from one of our resellers was um, obviously earlier this year, there was a lot of conversations around enabling teams to be able to work from home with remote access and teleworker options. Um, has have you seen that conversation now shift um, to other businesses now that companies pretty much have what they need in terms of getting their workers remotely set up or in some cases around Australia luckily the states that have been able to kind of go back to an, a working office environment yeah so I, I know the part of that wrote that question and that sort of came out of um, when we sort of had um, the Formula One and the event got cancelled and then all our wavelength partners sort of went back to base everyone was just inundated with oh wow we need a 40 gate we need more 40 client licenses everyone's working from home well March seems like a lifetime ago and stuff has changed so what's happened as sort of the pandemic and the recession sort of um, sort of seeped in is that we're getting a lot of people who have offices that want to go mobile they don't think they're going to go back to their office in the same way so they're looking at more sort of flexible branch solutions what they're looking at are things like um, 40 gates which have 40 extenders in them now the reason why I say for instance a surface um, you know UTM device, which is the XG series with a SIM card tray in it, has sort of been a bit deflated with some of the partners is that you normally put this uh, router in, in a server rack and it doesn't have the best 3, 3G, 4G reception. So what they really like about the 40 extender is they're able to actually put that somewhere that has reception and then they basically feed that back to their main firewall. So these types of flexible equipment arrangements, the portability of it is also, and also rapid deployment. So I've been doing a lot more demos around 40 cloud because people wanna know that they can pick up the switch, the access point, the router, the 4G modem, and then just ship it around from site to site. And then they can do zero touch deployment or they can at least see when it's online or push firmware. So that seems to be what people are looking at now in, in the past couple of months. It's shifted from they get around working from home to I don't think we're gonna go back to a normal office. I think we're gonna to have to move around a bit. How do I make this really easy to move the equipment around? And obviously Polynet's really good at doing that. Yeah, and I think rapid deployment, uh, you hit the nail on the head at the moment. Obviously, things are changing day by day, and we don't know what the next week or the next month holds. So being able to have that rapid deployment option where it can be done quickly, effectively, with minimal downtime, I think is a, is a major is a major talking point and turning point moving forward. And also stability of your backups as well. I had um, one partner say to me, because I was talking to them about that, and they said, yeah, sometimes I try to restore the, the backup configs um, on right. some of the other vendors, and it just it doesn't work. So with the 40... Uh, 40 gates especially and all 40 net equipment it always will do an export of your config and then when you re-upload the config it's in it's just it's just in the plain text and then I haven't had an issue with it I'm sure some partners will say oh, I had a config that didn't work but as long as you follow the upgrade paths when yeah. you're doing your firmware upgrades generally speaking your config files will always upload safely your backups okay cool and I guess on rapid deployment and being able to move and move and pivot um, quite easily I think you you put on social media a couple of I think it was last week or the week before um, that you had a face-to-face -face meeting planned um, and that had to change very rapidly to a virtual meeting um, and you were discussing the, the 40 net value prop and the product positioning um, 
what are some of the key differences in the conversations that you had um, on a virtual space than if you were to do it, say, face to face? Does the conversation change or is it very much the same? It becomes easier because, like, we, when it comes to the Fortinet equipment, so we use everything. We, we buy NFR equipment, so we're not we're not gifted anything. We use all Fortinet end to end. And sometimes I sort of think to myself, you know, if I had to go back to some of the vendors I worked with in the past and had to do some of the demos here in the middle of the pandemic, it'd be a little bit embarrassing, or it'd be really hard to have to burn some midnight oil to get everything set up. But really what we've done there is we have a, a demo pop environment, um, which is called Arkham Asylum. And essentially that's all of our 40 net equipment um, that's from those 10 uh, sort of product sets there. And we were able to, everyone was supposed to come into the office and then things had changed. And then we saw, we did measure out the meeting room where we couldn't fit as many people as we could. So we basically said, look, we just have to remove everything remote to video, pointed the camera at the equipment, and because it's lightweight, it's easy to plug in, you could basically manage it all from the cloud. We basically unplugged everything from all the server rack, put in some power packs, plugged everything all in. We're up and running in about an hour. Okay, so awesome. it's it's not just a snap your fingers and it's up to, up and ready to go, but essentially we were able to rebuild what is two sites essentially in our POC environment, you unplug them completely, shift them, completely move them. So there is some pride in, in doing that so that when you talk to these slides as we have them here, when you bring up all the stats and statistics, you can go, yeah, it can, it can actually do what it says. It's not just some sort of thing that marketing is spun up. Yeah, it's, you're it's showing it's almost a... You're showing almost a real world application. You're like, well, we're doing it now. It's not just you sitting in a room talking about it. You're actually showing that it can be done in a real world environment in the meeting itself. And it's it's the same reason why I like looking up all the results of the third party assessments. You know, you sort of just go through and you go, oh, that's interesting. Fortinet blocked 100 percent. And you're not just reading that on a, on a Fortinet slide that comes from Fortinet marketing head office. You actually go onto AV comparisons. You look up the latest test results and you go, that's interesting. Cisco missed 10 viruses yeah. of 767. And it's just interesting to see those sort of things. So always with partners, do some fact checking because the reason I have to do it is because I go do meetings with the, with the end users and they come prepared, some of them. Some of them will go, <laughs> they oh, would. No, that's wrong, oh, this is incorrect. And, and you really get, you, you can see some, some vendor reps, they'll just not know what to do because they're so used to the corporate slides. So if you do some independent research, and it takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes of your own time after hours, sit, read the links, read the news, um, and then all of a sudden you, you, you're ready to go when you get sort of some curveballs like that from some partners who are really switched on. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And the last question that we've got um, that's come through just before we wrap up with the last five minutes to go, um, was obviously always important to encourage collaboration, especially between Fortinet um, and ourselves um, and the team. So when we're working with resellers and, 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 and customers as well. So especially on larger scale projects, what is the importance there? Like how, how much do you work with Fortinet on a day-to-day -day basis? And what's the importance there of just consistently building that relationship? Yeah, so um, the reason why uh, if you work with Wavelink, we pretty much always will will want to involve Fortinet where we can within the grounds of Deal Reg. And the reason is, is that Fortinet having so many products, 27 products and so many different form factors, it's really hard to keep across it all. So we we here normally focus on the 10 that we've listed, but, you know, someone, uh, you'll be in uh, a presentation and then all of a sudden they'll say, yeah, we've got a website and we need some web application firewall protection. Or they'll say, hey, you know, what's all the offering here around um, cloud services? Uh, you know, that there'll be something around wanting some insights on their employees. So we can't possibly keep across all the tech and, and neither can an individual at Fortinet. The team at Fortinet really work hard, especially, um, you know, the, the, the solution engineers team to try to keep in, in depth with a lot of the things to do with 40 processes, a lot of things to do with the 40 OS, what's coming on the horizon as well. So having 40 net there, having the, the people that they've hired there who are really switched on, who try to keep across what's happening best in the market, but most importantly, what's happening internal is really useful for when you go to a customer meeting, because when you're selling this equipment, you're not selling it for them today. You're normally selling it to them for a minimum of three years. So yeah. you have to have some insight on where things are going, because exactly like we talked about in the previous slide, vendors get bought up and, and smaller vendors and best of breed vendors get bought up by the bigger ones. And the bigger ones are people like 40Net who go, for instance, with NSILO, which com converts to 40EDR. So you need to know what's what's happening, like Zone Fox for 40Insight and stuff like that. 
having that insider knowledge is really good. So having a good relationship with the vendor as a partner is, is good for that reason. Go to the NSC expert events, go to their webinars, go to their update sessions, because they are a wealth of knowledge of what's coming. Yes, exactly. And I think, I think that's, the, that's, that's the key. That the more that we work together, it's, it's, a, it's a mutual beneficial relationship, right? The more we do together, the, the more it um, equates to success for both parties. Um, on that note, we are wrapping up. There's no other questions. So just a quick summary, we will um, send through the slide, uh, this presentation recording um, information on the offer that we hope everyone takes up, um, as well as further information on how you get in touch with our team around a dedicated seat tap session or a uh, um, 40, value, uh, 40 net value proposi proposition um, session for your teams as well. Um, Jaden, thank you very much for this amazing session. It's always great to have you on board for these things. Uh, of course, he's got, to, he's, got to, he's got to get his face in there somehow. <laughs> I am real. I'm not, a, I'm not a machine that's all pre-recorded. This is all real. <laughs> it's all real. It's all real. It's all live. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, people in Melbourne, stay safe. Enjoy stage four. Um, we'll talk to you all very, very, very soon. Take care. Bye.